Woo! The good old times. Let's have a look. Fluid mechanics, movement of fluid in pipes, heat transfer, mass transfer, the mass transfer coefficient. Wait, what? Are these tears? Just joking guys, actually those were not tears because back then we didn't have time for crying. Chemical engineering is a very difficult subject indeed. So let's check out why. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you are new, don't forget to subscribe because we discuss a lot of chemical and process engineering, especially on student life and professional life. We talk about maybe product processes, companies, maybe even technologies or so. But for now, let me address one question I get a lot, and what I mean a lot is a lot. Is chemical engineering that hard, as people say, or what is it with chemical engineering that apparently people think is hard? And guys, I don't want to lie directly to your eyes. Let's be honest, if you split it, chemical and engineering both sounds like there's something going on, right? Chemistry by itself is hard, and engineering by itself, or any type of engineering, even the easy ones, is kind of challenging for young engineers. And this can be either great news for someone or can be bad news for someone else. Why? Because the essence of engineering is solving problems. So if you are into maybe engineering overall and you like a lot of chemistry or mathematics, you are on the right path. Talking about mathematics, let's start with the very first question, which will be how much mathematics are you going to encounter in chemical engineering? And the answer is a lot. I really mean it. It's not like a question or not, if you can skip it or maybe avoid mathematic problems. It's impossible, guys. If you're bad with math and you don't like math, chemical engineering is definitely not for you. And if you are into chemical engineering because of the chemistry or because of the approach of solving things or creating new stuff, you are in the right path. But if you are not that great at mathematics, you're going to have a very rough time. The typical maths that you're going to encounter are the most common ones, which is algebra, solving linear equations, and then maybe even more derivatives on integrals. And of course, I would say that the main crown will be differential equations. And yes, there are applications for that. Don't think that we study mathematics just for the sake of studying mathematics and very hardcore mathematics. They have applications in heat transfer, reaction engineering, reaction kinetics, and overall optimization of problems, such as either profit optimization, or if you're optimizing temperature, heat, exchanging in a distillation column, or overall process. Hence, you will see a lot of people complaining on the math itself. And of course, the application of that math into the crazy problems, which to be honest, sometimes one will say that is very crazy and you will never see that in real life. But the reality is that actually there's a lot of engineers that work with a lot of math in their everyday jobs. Talking about the reality of engineers working with mathematics, there's the other side, which will be thermodynamics. There is a lot of things to learn from thermodynamics and that will be applied in actual engineering problems. So as you can imagine, chemical engineers will be working with substances, chemicals and process overall. And such processes, the mere essence of having to either cool down or heat up or maybe to pressurize or make these type of changes will imply directly or indirectly the use of thermodynamics. You cannot escape thermal. Like literally, you can escape thermo, but I mean it in the sense that you can escape the application of thermo. Okay, I think I'm confusing you guys, but overall, you can escape the application of thermodynamic concepts in real life problems. The main problem with thermodynamics, I would say, is that it is very abstract, and that's when the engineer starts to evolve into this person that has to understand that the universe can either be very simply modeled or very complex modeled and that your straightforward approach towards learning may not be good enough for the understanding of more, let's say, convoluted or complex problems. That's why you will hear a lot of people complaining on chemical engineering because a lot of people just go there because they like either chemistry or they like math and they end up solving crazy things 
that are not so friendly for students, which are like Maxwell equations, understanding entropy, fugacity, activity, and trying to understand or make sense of those things in real life. The third concept overall that makes chemical engineering very hard is chemistry. Now, nah, just joking guys, actually there's no chemistry overall in chemical engineering. It is something that we have been debating that why are we called chemical engineers if we don't know that much on chemistry. But guys, if we have to compare maybe the mechanical engineer versus a chemist, I will say we are a little bit more in this side of mechanical engineer. And this may be frustrating to a lot of you guys because I studied before a lot of people go because they want to work with chemicals or chemistry and go to the lab or create a substance, I don't know, whatever they think chemical engineering can provide them. And they go there and there's no chemistry at all or at least just the basic chemistry that the chemical engineer is supposed to learn. Even though I see a lot of chemical engineers making the typical joke of not getting chemistry overall, not understanding what's a mole, not understanding what's the trend on the periodic table, and a lot of things that should have been studied before in chemistry 101. So this is food for thought for you guys. Chemical engineering is not that much into the actual chemistry itself, it's more into producing the chemicals. So try to imagine that. So that's why in the chemical sense, it's not that hard. Actually, you can escape with that much knowledge of chemistry. Also, we have this little aspect, which is called free time. Chemical engineers, or at least students, will see that there's not so much free time at all. Either because they're going to a lot of lectures that are very hard to understand, they are going with their professors or tutors in extra time, they're studying by themselves, they're doing a lot of exercise problems, doing homework, either projects or going to the lab or so. There's not so much free time because let's be honest, you need a lot of time to understand these type of concepts and once that you understand them, you need to work a lot with the numbers to at least make a sense and do it on the time required. Because of course, you're going to have a lot of exams and homeworks and projects which are very, let's say, not so friendly. Actually, I remember back in the day that it was impossible to study before. It was very hard to have this feeling of, I don't know how to say it, but feeling confident of yourself when you go to the exam, that was never my case. I went to the exams with a lot of fear of either missing something or maybe I misunderstood something. There was always something that I felt within that didn't give me the confidence to feel 100% sure of the exam. So this is also one thing that you will hear a lot. A lot of people complaining on very abstract exams or maybe exams that are very complex that you don't have the time to solve that you need to guess a lot or you need to assume a lot of things and that's the problem that when you're writing the exam you're doing all these processes you don't know if maybe the first assumption was correct maybe you shouldn't assume that or maybe it was okay so you're just like continuing with your life not knowing if the very basis of your solution is okay or maybe it was just purely incorrect and also guys, another very important thing that is getting more concerned nowadays is how to balance your student life with your personal life and eventually with your career life. I know that this has been a growing issue, especially for universities, that people is getting stressed, they are getting depression, they are getting this type of problems or health problems that are derived from the actual studies. So these are very serious issues, guys. So I don't know about you guys, but I remember always being on this stress mindset of there's always something else to do or I'm missing something, I'm not well prepared. I, I didn't feel that depressed, so that was great for me. I tried to do a lot of exercise and try to have the most healthy social life I could. But I know that for many out there, this is an issue. So I would definitely recommend you to attend this type of problems before they grow into even bigger problems. So that's why chemical engineering can be considered also a very rough subject or course to study because it's hard by itself, but people make it very hard or the ambient is always like very competitive between each other. So you just feel stressed, you feel kind of depressed, you are unhappy. 
Another thing to consider is also that we chemical engineers are very proud of our profession, of what we study, and we want to let everyone know that chemical engineering is very hard, that we are on top of the line, we are very important, we are a core part of society without fuels, without chemicals, without plastics, we are nobody. So that's why I see a lot of chemical engineers like propagating this idea of chemical engineering being like this very impossible position to get, which to be honest guys, is not that hard to get. Otherwise, we wouldn't get that much market saturation for chemical engineers. And guys, those are some reasons on why I think chemical engineering is hard. Of course, it depends a lot on the profile, but even the best profiles, or let's say the people that I think that have the best fit, they are problem solvers, very analytical, very disciplined, uh, they have their schedules and all that, even they will say it's quote unquote hard major. So don't hesitate to continue and make your best effort. It's normal if you don't get something. It's okay for you guys if you don't feel quite confident while studying or while you're studying all your courses. It's normal, guys. I've always thought that almost everybody, and I say almost because of course it's not for everyone, but I will say that almost everyone can achieve chemical engineering. If they are disciplined, if they are willing to put the work, they are willing to learn the subjects, understand them, and dedicate the whole goal for that. So don't hesitate into going for chemical engineering if that's what you want. Don't let people outside of chemical engineering or even inside chemical engineering tell you that you shouldn't go there, that you shouldn't study that hard major, that why are you going into this so-called dying field, why are you going to this classical engineering while well, you have a lot of technological engineering. If what you want is a great major, which is hard major of course, but not impossible major, definitely go for chemical engineering. And that was it guys. Some reasons on why people may say or may not say that chemical engineering is a hard major. I will say overall for the average people, it is in fact a hard major. But if you're into problem solving, you like sciences, you like math, you love, I don't know, physics and chemistry. I'm pretty sure that you will be enjoying most of it because of course there will be some tears, no joking aside, but overall it's a great experience to have. And guys, I would really love to see your comments. Let us know how hard do you think is chemical engineering? Maybe is it more like a myth that chemical engineering is hard or maybe is it true that it's actually hard? and we should warn newcomers or young students to avoid chemical engineering because it's very hard. They saturate the job market. So anyways, I'll read you and we will see each other in the next episode. Bye-bye.